Welcome to Gambling with an Edge with your hosts, Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin. Bob Dancer is America's premier video poker writer and teacher. He's written 10 books, including Video Poker for the Intelligent Beginner and the best-selling Million Dollar Video Poker. He helped develop the computer software Video Poker for Winners, and in 2004, he was inducted into the Video Poker Hall of Fame. Richard Munchkin has been a professional advantage player for over 30 years and is in the Blackjack Hall of Fame. His book, Gambling Wizards, Conversations with the World's Greatest Gamblers, is a testament to the many ways you can succeed at gambling. The goal of the show is that you'll be a more knowledgeable gambler tomorrow than you were yesterday. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good evening. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest tonight is BJ Traveler an Asian gentleman who travels the world playing blackjack and other casino promotions. We'll be talking to BJ in a few minutes. The Revel in Atlantic City is offering a promotion where your losses in July up to 100,000 are rebated 100% in 20 equal weekly increments beginning in early August. Last week on the air, Munchkin and I made a $200 bet as to whether the Revel would go through this promotion. I've heard from trusted sources that $25 video poker machines have been removed from the casino, but they still have large denomination slot machines, so it is still a very profitable play. But players are becoming aggravated by this. The casino is doing this promotion in order to create some buzz about the place, and pissing players off isn't the right way to create the buzz. What is your thoughts about this, Munchkin? Well, uh, you know, they advertised gamblers wanted. It sounds like what they really meant was grinders wanted. I think they uh, are not happy with the big play. And actually, uh, regarding our bet, Bob, I received a text last night that said, it would appear you have won your revel bet. They have gone crazy deactivating cards and or stealing comps, which is exactly, by the way, what I said they would be doing. They are also accusing people of betting via agents, even if all you're doing is helping someone play video poker sp- straight up. The place was fairly empty today. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, it does sound like I have lost the bet. <laughs> the um, Good luck in collecting. No, no, that's not going to be a problem. You did make uh, it to July 2nd. <laughs> did make it to July 2nd, maybe. So, I... Um, Although we're not going to announce on the air who sent Munch that uh, text. He, I do know that person and believe he is a, uh, a legitimate observer, a, a reputable observer. And so um, unless we get a lot of contradicting evidence to the contrary, which I'm not expecting, Munchkin is $200 richer. All right. Also in Atlantic City, on a September 1st, the day before Labor Day, the Taj Mahal is giving away $200,000 by burying sacks in the sand. Apparently, 20 players are picked at random from whoever is playing with their card inserted at a particular time of day. I don't have the note in front of me, but let's say it's 1 p.m. Uh, These players will be told where to dig the burlap sack with a voucher in it. And they, once they discovered that voucher, they take it to the cage, and it is redeemed. And if it's n- somebody else digs it up, not one of those 20, I expect the voucher will not be redeemed. So it's not quite like burying cash. Now, if they have t- 2,000 machines there, and I don't know how many they have, um, you have a 1 in 2,000 chance, and a $200,000 uh Promotion means your EV is $100. So you probably have to be actively playing, which means you've played a hand in the last 30 seconds. It's a decent low roller play. Uh, Everybody has the same minuscule chance, and players who don't play a lot receive uh, the same chances that somebody who does play a lot. Now, it's not a promotion I'm going to go for, I want to play in promotions where I do have a bigger chance if I if I play a lot. Uh, I suspect there will be some fights. Uh, it's possible all 2,000 machines will be full. 
And some of the people just sitting there doing nothing, waiting for that one o'clock magic hour or 30 seconds before one o'clock. And some non-people who don't have a seat will be claiming that if they were there, they would actually play. And so that gives them a moral right to the machine where these sitters have an immoral right. And so there will be, um, wouldn't surprise me, there's some uh, fisticuffs. Uh, New York, New Jersey players are not known for their politeness at times like this. Uh, so um, it's also the Taj, this is, this is a very public Atlantic City Beach. I don't know how they're going to keep other players off. They will have guards around. But uh, you're, if you're on the beach, you have a right to be anywhere you want on the public beach. So just because Taj guards say don't go there, I don't know that you're legally required not to go there, although they will be kind of big guards. <laughs> you so. know, when I first uh, read the article, I didn't go get all the details. But, of course, thinking like an advantage player, my first thought was, oh, we just need to have guys stake out the beach all night long and watch where they bury the money, <laughs> right? And then, and then, of course, they came up with this harebrained idea that you actually have to be playing a slot machine to qualify to go find the money. And it gives us no chance at all. And Apparently, if you get shovel number 17, you get a particular plot number. And if you can't find it in that plot, they will tell you where to dig. <laughs> So, so it's it really, it's just a big waste of time. Why don't they just give people the money? <laughs> I, I agree. It's supposed to be. I was thinking it was, it was all comers, and you were going to have 3,000 people with shovels out there on a small area of the beach. Now, I'd pay to watch that. <laughs> oh, I would watch it from a distance. I do not. I'm, uh, this would go to the youngest and strongest and uh, ones who... Uh, didn't mind a shovel gash every now and then. <laughs> You'd make a game and, show uh, And if, if, you'd, if I grabbed the bag and some guy who 40 years younger and 50 pounds of muscle heavier and he wants the bag, he's probably going to get it. <laughs> uh, so um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to. I take it you're not going to go to it. No, Atlantic City doesn't sound like a good place to be this summer. All right. So. We got another email at gamblingwithanedge at gmail.com from a blackjack player who sometimes dabbles in video poker. He wants to know what happens if you hit a jackpot at video poker and you don't tip the casino workers. So he thought a $4,000 Royal Flush jackpot was pretty big. And what would happen if somebody had the nerve not to tip? And what actually happens is nothing. Uh, there are always players who stiff casino workers every day on, on jackpots of that size in considerably larger jackpots. If you ask 10 players on their tipping strategy, you're going to get 10 different answers. There is no one right answer of always do a tenth of a percent or always do 2% or something. I tend to not tip at all, except at casinos where I'm teaching. I want the casino workers to promote the classes or at least not to badmouth me. So I'm not, I don't want casino workers to tell everybody what a cheapskate I am. So I will tip in those casinos. So, right. So and, and what would you tip on a $4,000 Royal? Uh, not that you play that low, but. <laughs> on uh, I, the game I play at South Point, which is where I play, the, uh, you can get $1,200 W2Gs. And, um, so probably anything under ten thousand would be a five dollar tip. Uh, twenty thousand, which would happen on dealt aces with a kicker, would probably be a twenty dollar tip. Forty, forty thousand, which would be a dealt royal in my dreams, that would probably be a thirty or forty dollar tip. Um, there are, and these would be considered on the low side, but acceptable. So um, Rita Rudner, who's a comedian here in Vegas, has a great philosophy on tipping. She says she doesn't really know how much to tip, so she gives them some money, and if they really look sad, she gives them some more money, and if they start looking really happy, she takes some back. <laughs> so I always thought that was a good idea on tipping. I would never take money back, but um, I thought it was cute. So let's talk to BJ Traveler. 
Munchkin, you've known him for a while. Why don't you tell us who he is? Uh, B.J. Traveler is a blackjack player who's traveled all over the world. Um, his goal is to play in a hundred casinos uh, around the—I uh, mean, a hundred countries around the world. And uh, so far, he's up to seventy-six. Uh, I did a print interview with him many years ago, which you can read at richardmunchkin.com. Um, and now he's broadened his horizons beyond just playing blackjack. So, B.J. Traveler, welcome to Gambling with an Edge. Thank you. So uh, go ahead, Bob. You start. All right, let's let's talk about Singapore, and uh, and Michael Shackelford. <laughs> so there is a game you played in Singapore, uh, called the eighty nine bet or something. So tell us power, about that. Power eight, uh, power baccarat. Power baccarat yes. or power eighty yeah. nine. What was that bet all alike? Yeah, you can bet uh, on next hand uh, nature nine or nature eight, on uh, banker side and the player side, and pay the uh, ten to one. All right. Now, if Michael Shackelford, when he was working at the Venetian at the time as a table game consultant, if he thought this was a, a game with a 6% house edge or some such number, how were you able to beat it? Well, interesting is that, well, first, of course, you can count, count the cards because that, uh, you just count the how many A and 9 left. And that, when there are more A and 9 left, they're more natural, natural for natural 9 and natural 8. So that's one way. And the other way is that uh, there are 30 tables, so they expose, uh, I I expose the button card. So if you see an uh, A or 9, uh, you, it's a very good chance that you can see many A and 9s among 30 tables. Then you cut uh, maybe, you can cut one deck or even, uh, even four decks on the middle, and then you count many, how many cards. So then you know that the next hand or next, in, next two hands, uh, A, or, A and 9, are coming. Then you bet on the eight and nine because that if you, it's a, you see a nine, then you cut uh, uh, one deck. Then after fifty cards, then you start betting on the natural natural nine uh, on banker and player side. And because uh, you 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 know a nine is coming, and it's very possible that the nine will be coming with uh, with uh, will join with another ten, is that which has a very very good chance. So the EV for that bet is one hundred fifty percent, and uh -huh. uh, the the maximum is ten thousand Singapore dollars, which means that. We can make we can make we made a half a million dollars in one night. How much is ten thousand Singapore dollars? I think it's about eight thousand U.S. dollars. Eight thousand U.S. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so they're and it pays ten to one. Yes, that's uh -huh. not a bad bet. <laughs> and one hundred fifty percent EV. Yeah, and so, so even if you're going to try to cut about a deck, which is a fifty-two cards. Yes, yes. So how? Close to fifty-two cards, you actually have to cut. In other it's words, a, if you're okay not really because, uh, good and you only cut <laughs> cut to four, somewhere between forty-seven and yeah, yeah, fifty-five, yeah. because if you miss it, I mean, if you cut uh, play earlier, that uh, you are going to lose twenty percent on the on, on the you you bet it, you, get, you bet both sides, you, you you lose twenty percent on ten percent on banker side playing uh, banker nature player nature, but if you if you miss one or two, you are losing about forty percent. But then then you catch a car, you get one hundred fifty percent. So you need not to be so accurate. Right, because you're betting it to, to land in either spot. And if it doesn't come out this round, well, yeah. you just bet it again next round. Eventually, it's got to come out. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, and hopefully it comes out with a 10 card. So, um, so, But I don't know if Mike Shackelford was involved in consulting for the casinos. Or, I, I don't know what his job was, actually, when he was consulting for Venetian. So. But it, in even either case, uh, you know, you, he, we'll be happy to tease him about your win. Uh. Yeah, interesting. The game lasts for half a year, but of course they re reduce uh, the maximum to one thousand, but which is uh, still playable. So it lasted for six months. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, uh, the, for for the ten thousand, lasts for only one week. Uh huh. And what were you able to take off that uh, bet in six months? Well, uh, many teams uh, play that game, so I uh -huh. don't know the total. I, I would say maybe one or two million dollars at least. Wow. Okay. It's a good month's work. Um, so uh, in the past, you, you, in traveling to these 76 countries, you were always a card counter. You were always looking for blackjack games to count cards. Um, the first thing I want to ask you about is U.S. players tend to think that the best blackjack games are here in the U.S. True. No, no. I mean, of course, uh, it de depends on the scale. I mean, that if you want to play big scale, then uh, the foreign games are, s they are smaller, $200 maximum, uh, $50 maximum. But the rules, uh, in most cases, in the U.S., you have a uh, whole card. 
In other countries, mostly they don't have whole card, so they have a early surrender versus a late surrender here. And you know, some countries even have a full early surrender against ace. So that's a positive of the top games. Yeah, you, you, now, I, I would say that, to my knowledge, is still maybe five, six countries in the world they have uh, this full early surrender right now. Yeah, so so we can we can still see a positive of the top. And uh, last year, uh, this year, I played uh, in countries kind of like never Thorpe Land. It's uh, in, never Thorpe Land. <laughs> yeah, so, in other words, they've never heard of Thorpe or maybe, card counting. Yeah, it's a four four decks. Uh, and they play Thorpe three wrote decks. beat yeah. the dealer fifty some years ago, which <laughs> yes. is an introduction to the public in card counting. So yeah. they've never heard of Ed Thorpe in. Maybe that you can we, we can bet a minimum one box, then uh, we spread to seven bucks maximum, and uh, playing against a uh, four decks, uh, uh, cut a uh, uh, cut one deck off. Yeah, so it's just playing that for several days. Yeah. Even I could beat that game. <laughs> and what did they think when they saw you spreading like that? Did they just think you're crazy? or? Yeah, I think they just uh, think I'm crazy. Crazy After... Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> After three, four days, they don't think so crazy. Then they start, they, well, they, they just they just bar me. They don't know. I mean, they don't know what happened. They just say, okay, don't, don't play. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so now you're really trying, you've, you've broadened your horizons. You're not going after the card counting game so much. Uh, so talk about that, your progression into other things. Yeah, I, well, I was invited into the games. Uh, then it so happened that uh, there's uh, uh, some friends, they, they observed the other, uh, they, they observed a guy that won 30 million in five years. And uh, then so they follow him and they see what he's, he was doing. And then uh, they, they found out what he was doing. And then we, so we started a team to, uh, to work, work on the same scheme. And uh, last year, this, uh, just, uh, but of course, uh, we killed the game because that guy is doing with uh, five, six people so for five, five, six years and uh, took 30 million. But uh, for us, we took, we, we, we used 200 people. So we burned the game in half a year. So we took only five million dollars. <laughs> Wait, two, you brought 200 people to, this is a particular one country, to <laughs> one, one ca casino. Yeah, particular country, America. <laughs> to one casino, all Asian. Well, mostly Asian, yes. yes. But there were some others. Okay, interesting. And, and this was what? This certainly wasn't counting cards. No, no, no. This, uh, this, is, uh, this uh, was, uh, well... In fact, they gave uh, too much rebate, and uh, they are now watching the, the betting very. Uh, I mean, uh, this is a baccarat. So baccarat, you don't you, you don't bet every hand. So for the, this casinos, uh, they 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 can If you you are not betting every hand, the, you bet uh, maybe about say one in four hands, it still qualify you as betting every hand. I see. So 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 what they the uh, maybe they are people. There's the intention is that uh, if you bet every hand, then the casino will make up money, 20000 a person. But if you're not make betting ma every many hands, then you, the, the casino, in fact, is making only 5000 but they repay 14000 <laughs> I see. So, they, I see. They're, so they're giving you not a loss rebate, but a percentage of your action. Also a loss rebate. If you and lose. a loss rebate yes. on top of it. <laughs> yes. Nice. 200 people. And he couldn't even find my phone number. <laughs> ah. Now, Macau is sort of near Singapore. At least, if you live in Las Vegas, it sounds like they're close to each other. Do you ever play in Macau? Are there good games there? Or have yes, there... yes. And after, I mean, after many years traveling, so of course, uh, I have uh, get the same conclusion. In, in fact, I've been told many times by American players saying that uh, uh, foreign countries are too small, etc. And, but in the end, we... I, I, will, I will say that after many years, I will agree with that because that uh, uh, most money are made from Macau, Singapore, and Las Vegas because the game are bigger, the, the tolerance are bigger. So, so we play a lot in, in Macau, and, uh, and I think uh, with the spread of baccarat, and more casinos, uh, they, they offer baccarat games. In the same time, casinos, they are greedy, so they put many side bets on the baccarat, new side bets. And uh, those side bets, I think, they are not uh, studied uh, very thoroughly. So many side bets, you can count on the side bet. So we, we play on the, one of the side bets at the Macau, and, uh, and in half a year, we took about uh, $1 million and on the game, and then, then they, they killed, I mean, that uh, they, well, for that, we need good penetration. So they just uh, make the penetration worse. So, so to stop the just game. Just like blackjack. Yeah, and also that we have uh, played a good uh, rebate game in there. We get 15% uh, loss rebate. 
on, on Macau. So uh, um, playing blackjack, blackjack and baccarat. So so first we playing blackjack to qualify for the uh, for the rebate. Then after that we then we we go to we go to play baccarat. We also did that in other countries, other countries with uh, same affiliations, uh, casinos, and uh, the program also that is very good. And uh, we are very lucky because that. And, and in, in that country, uh, we first we play blackjack to qualify, which uh, we we have only minus point one percent on the uh, on, on the blackjack play. Then after we finish, uh, say uh, one point five million dollars betting on that, so we we are paying about fifteen hundred dollars for the uh, for for the privilege of going to bet one hundred fifty thousand. And I think one hundred fifty dollars for the privilege of going to bet one hundred fifty thousand on the backer game. And what happened is that we was very lucky because that we have ten players uh, and we went to bet uh, one one hand uh, one hundred fifty thousand on the back red and all ten players they all win. Oh dear, <laughs> casinos might notice that. That's the best way to play a loss rebate is to just win, and then, <laughs> and then the casino doesn't have to uh, give you any rebate at all. Yeah, for fifty percent, you know that's uh, the, the edge is six point five percent on the one one hundred fifty thousand dollar bet. Sure. So yeah. you're making one bet of 150,000, and they're giving you a 15 percent loss rebate on, yeah. on yeah. that one bet. That's yeah. I'd love to do that all day and long. That, and that's only last year. That's interesting because I mean, after so many years. Well, yeah. that's the thing. You know, I I constantly hear you know that the games are dying. Blackjack is dying. And let you're talking about just last year. You found a game where they had no idea about card counting, where you could spread from minimum to maximum. That uh, you're you're still finding places where there's positive off the top games, so blackjack is far from dead. People but he just was need talk, to he was playing it get a in Zambia. <laughs> now now Zambia is a little bit off the beaten path <laughs> for most of our listeners. Well, <laughs> well Victoria Park, uh, Victoria Four is very beautiful, uh, which uh, we we went from Zambia to see the, this four. Yeah, I mean it's a great tourist place anyway. It'd be, it'd be a great place to visit, and this way you can pay for your vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like e even uh, in uh, Egypt, uh, they they have full early surrender, but uh, they respond very fast. But it's a nice way to see the the py pyramid. Right, but now in historically, Egypt was a place where they would steal your money at the border when you were trying <laughs> to leave. Is that still a problem? The yeah. the um, uh, immigration immigration people? people, yeah, would would uh, say you needed some documents in order to take money out of the country. I know several people this happened to, but this was back twenty twenty five years ago. I don't know if it's still that bad. Well, uh, you need to uh, you have to declare money. Usually, uh, more than ten thousand dollars you bring in or all the countries. And what we're trying to do with, with, uh, with, with spread the money, if we have a team, we spread the money so that we don't have to declare. I see. Now, have you had money stolen from you in various countries? I'm not talking about by teammates. I'm, I'm talking about where the, you know, either the government or the casino or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many times I've mean, been robbed uh, in, in the gunpoint and... Uh, and even in the local local airport, uh, when I was, uh, my people went through the uh, Venetia's uh, local airport, and uh, the security found my, found, my, found the money, and uh, they just uh, took my people to the, the security guard office, and uh, they have uh, uh, military people and uh, police, seven people. Then they just took sixty percent of the money. Then, then what? Then what country was that? Ven Venezuela. Venezuela. Yeah, and it's a local airport. It's not even an international airport. So we just uh, took, took took a local pl flight. And then, of course, we've been robbed at Colombia. <laughs> That's my fault. <laughs> but anyway, I, I won more than ten times on the the money I robbed at Colombia. So that's kind of so tax. you just looked at it as a tax. Ten percent got robbed. You're still okay. Yeah, yeah. And then in the Colombia, the the requirement is that you cannot uh, you cannot take in or out ten thousand dollars, even you declare. So three of us went to the to, to the country without knowing the uh, the new regulations. So we brought seventy thousand, and forty thousand dollars was uh, confiscated. That we declared the money, but the forty thousand was confiscated as a, as a custom. And then uh, they say that they they will charge twenty percent tax on that, uh, even that we declared and we coming into the country. And we try to say that we are not we are not coming in, we are not going into there, but kind of forced to because no uh, no flight at that, at that day. And then in the end uh, we. Negotiate, we, we negotiate to my friend with uh, custom, and they say, okay, you can file for uh, not to, to be taxed, but you have still have to pay the 20% as a bribe. The difference <laughs> is that uh, you pay the bribe, you get money faster. So in the end, we, we pay the bribe, but that, uh, I was kind of uh, not happy with that. I think that 20% uh, tax, uh, we should not pay 20% for bribe. 
So what happened is that you we think fifteen percent for a bribe <laughs> is enough? <laughs> Maybe ten percent. I mean that. So what happened was that uh, I, my friend uh, who, who is uh, intermediate with uh, custom, so he accompanied me to central bank to get the money, forty thousand dollars, and then but I need to pay the bribe in local money. So we brought the forty thousand dollars with me to my hotel to change for lo local money. So I when I when, when he parked his car, I took the money. I just ran away. <laughs> And he was following me about. I was so he was uh, six feet tall, and I was, I was fat. So <laughs> after seven minutes, I, I rest. And he said he came to me. He said that you don't have to run if you don't want to pay. You don't need to pay. And uh, but uh, in that case, I I, I couldn't uh, guarantee your your the, the safety or your, of your money and uh, your life. Oh, but you don't have. So, here's so you option. decided to pay. <laughs> now apparently Jack Benny would have had a problem with that, but but you didn't. <laughs> all right. What? Well, so did you, have you ever thought about using travelers' checks instead of carrying all that cash? Well, many countries the traveler check they don't accept it. Oh very, really? Or very even even in, in, in Europe, like Western Europe, like in Brazil, uh, not uh, Belgium. Okay, even in even in those. Uh, very civilized countries. Uh, you, you, we have sometimes you have difficulty catching catching out traveler check. They allow you maybe only one thousand dollar like that. Even in the casino, usually the casino yeah, yeah, will yeah, take yeah, the yeah, traveler's yeah, checks. Yeah. So, so, so I, I was surprised that, uh, that even in Western Europe they are not not so uh, behind on the banking system. I don't know why. Wow. Yeah. So, so in most cases, uh, now out, out of America, we just use cash. Now you've. Your goal was to be 100 countries. You're up to 76. Yes. Do you have, that's 24 to go. Do you have particular ones on your bucket list that you're going to hit these? <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm trying to identify the casino, uh, countries with good, uh, many casinos like Argentina. And uh, I have, uh, I, I'm, I was not, I'm holding Taiwan passport. So I have difficulty in getting visa for that. Uh, so so some countries still, still have visa problems. So. And they are they have many good casinos. Yeah, so I'm trying to go to those countries. So are you really interested in the casinos or the tango and the beef? In Argentina? <laughs> At Argentina, yes. Yes. And so good. So that's one. You still got twenty three more countries to make it up to a uh, hundred. Are there any others that are on your list? Well the, the, near Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, there are it's three countries together, so i I want to go there and uh, also some uh, remote island like uh, Fiji, Tahiti. And uh, those uh, Pacific Islands, it's more difficult to I'd go. I'd like to yeah. go to Fiji and Tahiti. Even. <laughs> First of all, I, I didn't know they had casinos there, but uh, now that I know, uh, I'm more likely to go. Yeah, after counting for 20 years, uh, counting is really boring for me. It's a, it's a job. But so what I'm doing is that I'm trying to change the environment, to go to different countries to, to, so that to, to make uh, counting work not so boring. So now uh, tell us about moving beyond counting. You, you started moving away from counting and into other things. So uh, you had a story about uh, uh, playing a whole card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, uh, mostly country, uh, foreign countries don't have whole cards, but uh, in America there are many whole cards games. So I was invited to, into a game to play whole cards. And the uh, interesting story is that uh, I, I was betting two, two bucks, two, $5,000. On the shoe game, the shoe game you don't. It's really that the most. Of, I think most whole card you is a handheld game, but for shoe game we found very good good dealers for the exposing the whole card, and the, and the two stories. Okay, one one was that we have a, a, a very experienced whole card readers, and then she was reading the whole card, and after a while, a while she gave up. She said that it's too difficult. Then uh, the captain of the team, he 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 was a student of the uh, the master. And the, the, of the the the, the girl, and the, he went to to the table to to the seat to read whole cards, and then we won fifty thousand dollars. After the finish the game, I, I asked the, the student, I said, why you could read better than your master, your your teachers? He said that uh, well, uh, well, some people they are uh, they find excuses not to read the card, so that the, if the card is not so easy to read, so they 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 need not to take the responsibility. But he's the kind of person that. Uh, he have to do it, so so in the end he he could. And the what interesting story is that we bet two bucks five thousand dollars on the game on the whole card. I as a big player signal by uh, by uh, ice, you know they, the whole card readers. So I bet for, for two, two bucks five thousand, and then my, the the captain texts me saying that don't exceed a hundred thousand in one session. So so I was winning twenty thousand. I say well still a, a lot from a hundred thousand. 
But then I, I won ninety one thousand. So I say, okay, let's reduce it in, in case. So I you're now exceed. up to one hundred and eleven thousand. No, no, he's no. ninety one. Ninety one thousand. And he's ninety one. So I, I paid five, five, two hundred bucks. So I reduced to two two bucks for four thousand. So even if you want them both, you'd be <laughs> at yeah. ninety nine thousand. Yeah, yeah. But then I got the A seven and uh, double down on the A seven. The so, nerve of you. <laughs> so I see that. So now is you're that, at one hundred three thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, another text saying that the uh, uh, lose five thousand dollar back. <laughs> and then so I went to I I went to back of the table and lose five thousand. And then what's interesting is that uh, there's a, 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 a my also one of the team teammates. He he was uh, known for not tipping, never tipping. And he said that uh, what you should do is that uh, you should store up and tip five thousand dollars. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, actually, Bob and I both know that that <laughs> friend who is known for not tipping, and I'm sure he gagged when he said that you should have tipped the 5000 away. No, but. I don't think so. Uh, this person is known for not personally tipping. He might not be known for not recommending that BJ not tip. <laughs> That's, that might be different. Well, he, uh, as I described, when he was nominated on the uh, uh, Blackjack, uh, what's the... Uh, t- Person, <coughs> I mean, the on Hall the of uh, fame? Uh, Hall of Fame, He's and then quote 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 for him is that uh, <coughs> tipping is a Chinese tongue. He never heard of. <laughs> ah, tipping is a Chinese tongue. He's never heard of. good. All right, now you you start out as a card counter, and then when you said you ran two hundred people through, that implies a lot of administrative skills and recruiting people and training, and that's a whole lot different than card counting. Well, it's, uh, if you are doing that 200 people on the back row, it's not so difficult. <laughs> back row, you just, uh, you just, you just bet him blindly. You just pay, say, okay, betting every four hands. Then but it's still a, it. it's a management type job as opposed to, a, you know, a, a card counting type job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, integrity is, is uh, most important. Uh, people, <clears throat> there's uh, two, two possibilities. One is that uh, people stealing the from money, okay, which is very big. And the other is that people stealing from the uh, money. Uh, chips uh, are in front of them, so we have to watch uh, watch them closely. But uh, luckily, that uh, the EV is good, and uh, so I, I think we, we we perhaps we maybe we 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 were stolen about half to one million dollars. <laughs> but uh, luckily, that and uh, among two hundred people we are using, only one people <laughs> took the front money away. But uh, that guy returned the money after one year. <laughs> what did you do to encourage him to return the money? Well, he's kind of uh, in desperate uh, need, need money. So he said that uh, he wants to borrow the money, but uh, he forced the team to borrow the money to him. He has uh, uh, 81,000 chips in front of him and said he said he needed $30,000. So he borrowed $30,000 and then he left an uh, uh, IOU for, for the team to collect for him. And then one year later, he returned the money. But he did pay it back. Well, that's yeah. good. But but getting to your point about the administrative task, you did have a business degree before you got into gambling, right? Yes, I, I have an MBA from University of Chicago, and uh, so uh, my er- earlier earlier years, I, I was a, a stockbroker, and uh, I went uh, broke after <laughs> uh, brokerage uh, for for th- thirteen years. I I was uh, uh, played the stock. I mean, I gambled too much on the stock market, so then uh, I switched to uh, uh, to uh, advantage play, and uh, then uh, uh, much easier to identify your edge <coughs> in a casino than yes, in the stock market. Yes. Um. All right. Very good. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Now, on loopholes. Now, you exploit a lot of loopholes on side bets or other places. And when the casinos find the loopholes, they close them or close you out. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, they, they do both. Some Sometimes uh, in... Uh, one of the interesting uh, stories that uh, in uh, San Singapore and uh, uh, my my friend uh, they they uh, try, try and see the three car uh, three car poker they have exposed one card. <coughs> so what you need is uh, to you you have to be short or you want to be sit lower. So he just uh, had a wheelchair and wheelchair his friend into the casinos and then of course they they made some money. Then after they made some money and the casinos uh, they are got suspicious so they cash out and my friend. Will push his friend out of uh, the casino, went to uh, the shopping center, and then uh, the, the security people follow them, follow them out to to see what happened. So after a while, they 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 decide that the people who sat in the wheelchair, he just uh, stood up and ran away. 
And uh, what happened is that uh, the, <clears throat> the, my, my friend, he was a uh, uh, very stubborn people. So after several days, he went into the casino after this incident. So casino, casino uh, sent him, a, uh, uh, announced him as a blacklist, okay, then sent, giving a blacklist uh, uh, no, notice. And then uh, two month, uh, one month later, he, he went again into the casino, even he was blacklist. And then uh, uh, the casino now uh, sent us, uh, called the police and uh, then sent him to the, the, the jail for one night. And, and then uh, uh, he wanted to protest because that, uh, he got the invitation from marketing department of the casino, invite him to, to the casino. So, so he claimed that uh, I thought he thought playlist was uh, off. Okay, but uh, the, the lawyers uh, advised him because uh, it took several months uh, for his case, and uh, to so he just said uh, advised him to just uh, uh, just uh, admit it. Uh, then uh, then he explained to the, to the judge he, he was not uh, he was advantage play not uh, doing anything. Uh, 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 stealing, uh, cheating, etc. So finally, he got a fine of uh, five hundred Singapore dollars. And so, which is, which is nothing. Four hundred dollars. Yeah, which yeah, is not nothing. Yeah. Um, carnival games like three card poker and those are now spreading to Singapore and Macau too. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. How much is the? How much can you bet on those games? Uh, but maybe just uh, just uh, about one or one thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. Yeah. One or two thousand. Yeah, still uh, good, good. Do you think those games will? Are they popular over there? Do you think they'll get more of them, or are they just mostly focused on baccarat? Yeah, yeah, focus on baccarat. Right those those games, uh, as I said, some people uh, following Americans' uh, experience, uh, then seeing the exposed cards, and so kind of will burn the game. It's not so not not so good now. They get burned too quickly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> now, in playing in Macau, then since you're you were born in Taiwan. You you fit right in there where Richard and I don't look like we were born in Taiwan. But in playing in Zambia, is, which is in Africa, is being a Chinese more advantageous than being an American? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Africa, a lot of Chinese. Yeah, I, I, I think be, having a U.S. passport is the worst that you can have, you know, when you travel. Uh, even being Canadian would help, I think. Um, when you travel for to, casino as gambling. an advantage player, anywhere in the world, you know, I, I think. Uh, I would agree with that. Yeah. And and actually, do you think there are more? My impression, and maybe I'm wrong, is that there are more advantage players in the Asian casinos than in the American casinos. It seems like there are a lot of people. Taking yeah. advantage of games in once I play at uh, uh, the uh, casino in Korea, and which is uh, must be one of the world most uh, best place to play because uh, it's uh, like a no no top land for three years, and you, you so we we can bet one hundred dollars then nine thousand dollars. Okay, wow. so so in one weekend uh, I counted uh, two hundred <coughs> counters in one casino in one weekend. <laughs> wow, how uh, long I, did that last before they? That, that that game lasts for about about three years. Three yeah. years yes. with two hundred counters in there. I know. I mean, once I counted two hundred counters. Oh. In the end, I mean, near the end, yeah, yeah. People of course increase more and more counters, knowing the place. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> I first went to Korea in '86, and at that time, um, they they knew about card counting, but there was some kind of unwritten rule that if you never bet more than two hundred dollars. They would let you play. And I and there were these guys that would come in in the morning and you could eat at the table. So they would order their breakfast and sit there eight, ten hours a day, spreading basically ten dollars to two hands of two hundred. And one day I went in and I counted 40 guys like that. Now, we were there betting a lot more. You know, I counted 40 guys that were doing that. And, you know, I called my team and I said, this is not going to last. They're just not going to put up with this anymore. And, um, you know, and sure enough, a couple of weeks later, they came in and just barred everybody. Um, you know, fortunately, they didn't get us. We were using Japanese big players, so, um, you know, they, they, we lasted quite uh, a long time. That, that was before the uh, government opened, uh, uh, I mean, that before government opened casinos themselves. Oh, in, in Korea. Yeah, in, in Korea. Yeah, in Seoul. So there are two government casinos in Seoul. And uh, I mean, you are, you, are t you are talking about Walker Hill, which Walker is uh, Hill, yeah. Yeah, private. And then the uh, government opened two casinos uh, to compete with Walker Hill. And the government was uh, very polite. 
<laughs> very tolerant. So we're not talking about the ten dollar to four hundred dollars. We're talking about the one hundred dollar to nine thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, at the time that we were there, <laughs> the maximum was three thousand, um, and yeah. So our our big players could basically spread. I think we were playing at a hundred dollar minimum table, yeah. what, what and it was an advantage off the top game. Yeah. What interesting? What happened to work here is that in two o five. They gave a very good rebate program. If you go to, uh, you just bought by thirty thousand dollar junket ship, we're playing on Baccarat, then uh, you you they give you two thousand three hundred dollars uh, rebate, and uh, and also also two night rooms. So one of my friend, my 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 friend, he went to uh, went to Baccarat a uh, hundred twenty times. Each time they take him fifteen people. He took three million dollars from one casinos in 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 a year. Wow. You think the casinos would notice a pattern? <laughs> well, yeah. Actually, that that brings up a really good point. I we mean, we got about two minutes to go through this point. Okay, okay but uh, it just seems like in Asia, um, these return on rollover and rebates have been going on for years, and they've been getting massacred for years. You would think, is it just because of the competition? They want to. They keep offering it to keep people from going to the casino next door. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, that uh, uh, Asia has been uh, quite polite. Yeah, so even even one of the casinos in uh, Malaysia, Genting, they they know who I am. Who they know I'm BJT, but they still allow me allow me to play. So, so I was uh, not very polite uh, because I brought uh, TV people, camera into the casino, then the then the shoot a program, TV program. Without getting permission ahead of time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I, was, <laughs> I was blacklisted because of that, not because I, I was counting I think you God. deserved it. <laughs> I, I deserve that. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you, BJ Traveler. We have lots more questions for you, which means you're going to have to come back and visit us again. This was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Munchka, what did we learn tonight? Uh, well, we learned there the best blackjack games are not in the United States. That there's money to be made all around the world. And there's uh, good games in that Fiji. You have to pay a tax sure. on a bribe on a tax uh, in Colombia. But and twenty percent is too much of a bribe. <laughs> right. Ten yeah. percent is okay, but twenty percent <laughs> is too much of a bribe. And and actually, the thing that really shocks me that I I'm really amazed by is that they don't take travelers' checks, you know, in in what in first world countries, you know. Would they take BJ Traveler's checks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The South Point has more than 10,000 games returning more than 99%. That's more than anyone else. Every Monday in July, plus today, July 4th, the South Point is offering double points on video poker and point multipliers on slots as well. Promotions go midnight to midnight. There are no limits and no machines are excluded. All month long, the casino is holding a $600,000 money madness promotion. Progressives begin at $10,000 and must hit by $25,000. All players in the casino activate, actively playing with a slot card in place are eligible to win. If you are playing, when the jackpot hits, you receive $20 in free play. And then the progressive starts over again at 10000 and keeps going until it's hit. It will do that all month long. Also, every day at 10 a.m., there's a $1,000 progressive that goes once and must hit before 25. So if you're playing after 10 a.m., you're actually eligible for both progressives. At the Palms, there are drawings at 8 p.m., Fridays and Saturdays, and on Fridays, those two nights also between 8 p.m. and midnight, you receive five times drawing entries for those drawings. PEW, play, earn, and win, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, for the first half of the month are mostly cleaning supplies like paper towels, Tide detergent pods, uh, toilet paper, etc. The top two gifts are a 32-inch television and a Sonic Care toothbrush system. So I can see where Sonic Care toothbrush deals with cleaning, but I don't know what a television set does with cleaning. But anyway, you may redeem your points earn Monday as late as Friday. As always in the PEWs, you keep your points. On the Video Poker for Winners website, uh, they have monthly drawings at the end of every month. So they don't announce them this early in the month, but they also have daily uh contest and if i said drawings i meant contests so thursday july 4th 
There, the contest is wheel poker. On Friday, there's ultimate four of a kind bonus. Saturday is super triple play. So every day is a different game. You play for free and the winner gets some prizes. It also introduces you to some of these games that you might not be familiar with. For some people, if you ask them what was ultimate four of a kind bonus, they wouldn't, they might not be able to define it well off of the top of their head. But on that website, you can play it for free until you can get a good idea um, what the games are. All right, Richard, you're actually in town this week. Sometimes you uh, call in. Uh, and you're going to go to the World Series. I Yes, I'm going to go trolling at the World Series and uh, look for guests that have been dodging me that haven't been... Uh, uh, answering my emails. I think a lot of these poker players never look at their email. but uh, So, yeah, I'm going to go over there and try to rope some guests. Uh, so, And very possibly one of those guests will be on the air next week or the next uh, that, two weeks that, that or is, next three that weeks. That is my hope, uh, yeah. So uh, next week uh, I did talk to Bob Nersessian this week, and he's available if, if uh, I don't uh, rope in a poker player. I'd like to get a poker player while, you know, with the World Series uh, going on right now, so... Having gaming lawyer Bob Nersessian, what the games are. All right, Richard, you're actually in town this week. Sometimes you uh, call in, uh, and you're going to go to the World Series. I Yes, I'm going to go trolling at the World Series and uh, look for guests that have been dodging me, that haven't been uh, uh, answering my emails. I think a lot of these poker players never look at their email, but... Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go over there and try to rope some guests. Uh, so, and very possibly one of those guests will be on the air next week or the uh, next that, two weeks or is, next three that weeks. That is my hope. Uh, yeah. So, uh, next week, uh, I did talk to Bob Nersessian this week, and he's available if, if uh, I don't uh, rope in a poker player. I'd like to get a poker player while, you know, with the World Series uh, going on right now. So. Having gaming lawyer Bob Nersessian as a backup plan is not a terrible position to be in. True, true. And, I, and, and you know, I had talked to him about uh, the Revel promo. Um, yeah. You know, that's why I was calling him at the time. And, and you know, he did say that, uh, you know, if, if the Revel information was in writing, which it was, and you lost the money and they then refused to pay you, you would have a lawsuit, but... Part of my calculations in not playing was, I said, but that means my $100,000 could be tied up for three or four years. And he was like, yes, it does. <laughs> uh, and, and of which 80000 are paid to him. Yeah, right. And, you know, which actually, might be more of a problem for you than it is for him. <laughs> true. And one of the things I wanted to mention, too, that I forgot before is how many times have you – checked with the casino on the amount of money that you won or lost, and their records are way different than what your records show. Frequently. So, you know, what's to prevent Revel from saying, you know, you lose 100000 and they say, yep, we've got you down for 37.5. Okay. Um, on slot and video poker software that is modern, and the Revel was built a year and a half ago, they have new stuff. The systems is pretty good, so we're not really going to have that problem. It used to be where you, there were things like called card pulling, where you could make it seem like you had different amount of loss than you actually did. But current software in slots and video poker is accurate. Now on table games, where there's there's a lot more funny things you can do on table games. Well, but the Revel promo didn't apply to table games. Did not apply to table games. So, uh, so I would I would not think that would be a problem. Or, I, if I were playing it, I would definitely be checking with the with the uh, desk after every single play to make sure that and and what is your recourse if they do have it wrong. In most casinos in Vegas, if, if your records are different than theirs, they will work with you to try to reconcile the difference. Like uh, the Gold Coast has notoriously inaccurate uh, point system. And so there's always discrepancies there. And if you show that you have regular records, they will... Um, frequently take your word for it or we'll go back and research it. 
I'm not sure what the Rebel is going to do. They have not started this promotion out with a bang. No. I was thinking they would um, be a little... They wanted to make a big splash there, and uh, they would actually be taking the worst of it and uh, be gracious about this promotion, and they want to show everybody this is a great place to play. Come back. We, win, we, we, we like your business. Instead, they're becoming Nazis, apparently, right from the get-go. Yeah, that's my understanding, too. And it, and it also seems pretty clear. I mean, the, the promotional material made it sound like they were courting big action, but it seems very clear that they really do not want big action. Well, not big video poker action. They still have some large denomination slots there. So it is all right if you want to play two or $300 on a slot machine per pull. And assuming it's still above the 85% state minimum or whatever that minimum is in New Jersey, it's still a, a heck of a promotion. Yeah, if, if you get paid. If you get paid. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we got about three minutes to go. So uh, one more question for BJ Traveler. Munchkin, what question did you have in reserve? <laughs> uh, I, okay, so what's, what story are you not telling us? You must have some great story about uh, either getting robbed at gunpoint. You said you got robbed at gunpoint? Where was that? Yeah, at uh, Colombia. <laughs> uh, Everything happens in Colombia. <coughs> it seems like that might be the one uh, country my, my to My fault, my oh. fault. <laughs> oh, it was your uh, fault? No, uh, no. I mean, that, uh, I fought to, my fault to go to Colombia. Anyway, uh, we, are, we, are, uh, we are leaving at, uh, between uh, two casinos. Uh, the hotel is uh, between two casinos because uh, the country is dangerous. I want to near the hotel uh, casinos. So I kept my money in the casino safe, uh, because, uh, in, the, in the hotel safe because there's no safe, uh, safety uh, box at uh, my room. So after a while, then we, we took, took all the, our money from the, uh, uh, the hotel, hotel safe, and then we counted the money, and uh, we lost uh, maybe they steal about $500. So we have a uh, $100 bill so for uh, $10,000, and then become 99 or 98. So we know that uh, this, uh, the, the hotel was, uh, uh, clerk was stealing money. So we complained to the hotel, but uh, we, that's the first time we were not uh, so alert. And we complain, of course, uh, hotel deny, and then we we, uh, we think uh, we are lucky because uh, they didn't steal all the fifty thousand. They, they still just just took five hundred dollars. <coughs> and then uh, when uh, I I need to go to uh, it's a it's a Christian uh, ho holiday, so I need to go to America for a TV interview. And uh, then uh, I left my girlfriend to change the money because uh, holiday I, I could, we couldn't change the money. So after the change, my girlfriend changed the money, then he went to, uh, he took a taxi in front of the hotel to the airport, which is on the um, mountain side. So on the halfway, there's a, a motorcycle with uh, two people, one people with a gun, then uh, to stop the taxi, then another motorcycle came in, and then on the back, okay. So they took everything from her, and uh, including $30,000. And then uh, she, she asked for the passport back, but they, she, she was hit by the gun, gun uh, point. And then uh, they, they took the money, then he reported to the police, and the, the taxi was also a stolen, stolen car. So the taxi was waiting for her outside the hotel. Wow. So it must be, must be the hotel clerk I mean, doing the, all, all this, but of course, uh, for, Col for Colombian pol policemen, they, do, they, they don't care. They probably were in on it. I mean, <laughs> yes. oh. Very interesting. Um, so... Are you I planning to go to Colombia anytime soon, Bob? Not, not until BJ makes another trip there, which might not be soon either. <laughs> Very good. So thank you, uh, Richard. Thank you, Munchkin. Go out and hit lots of royal flushes tonight. Good night, everybody. You've been listening to Gambling with an Edge with your hosts, Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin. Subscribe to the show in iTunes, and episodes will be delivered to you automatically every week. Archived versions of past shows may be found at BobDancer.com and RichardMunchkin.com. We welcome emails at GamblingWithAnEdge at gmail.com. Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin are both available on Facebook and welcome your questions. The sponsors for the show are the South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, the M Resort, the Palms Casino Resort, and the website VideoPoker.com. Join us again next week for another Gambling with an Edge. <laughs>